Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a flawless narrow hem. I'm going to be using the band roll technique, which was a technique popularized in Korea. So this is called a band roll interfacing tape, and I'm going to cut out however much I need to do my hem. Here I cut off a little bit and then I'm pulling the thread up and with my seam ripper I'm inserting it into a tiny hole and pulling the thread. My desired hem today is 1 8 of an inch but you can make it bigger or smaller as necessary. Now I'm sewing over the little hairs and then I'm going to flip it over twice like this and make sure that everything is neatly tucked in and then I'm going to sew over it all the way down as well. Next up comes the satisfying part. All you need to do is pull the band roll and like that guys you have a beautiful hem. I'm sure you know how difficult it can be to do narrow hems, so this technique will make it super easy and perfect. We also have a tutorial, so check out the link in our bio. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to do a French seam, which is a simple technique that hides the raw edges. It's typically used with thin or sheer fabric. To begin, you need a half inch seam allowance and then you sew on the right side of the material one quarter inch away from the edge and then trim the excess. Now we're going to flip the material and I'm going to sew over the edge again at one quarter inch. And just like that folks, we're done. So this is my French seam and now you can't find a raw exposed edge anywhere. The French seam technique was invented before the serger came along. Nowadays people just use their serger, but the French seam still has a more sleek look. So I demonstrated the French seam technique on the inside of this mini skirt for my mini mannequin and I did the same for this gorgeous blouse. Bye! There is a 100% chance you've encountered this stitch before. Whether it's on jeans, martial arts gi, jackets. So today I'm going to show you how to make it. First you need a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then you're just going to sew a straight line. Then you fold over just one of the flaps and you cut off the excess. Then with the remaining flap, you're going to fold it over twice. I like to press it down with my hot iron because it makes it flatter and easier to sew. Back to the sewing machine we go. I'm just going to secure this by stitching a straight line across. The flat stitch is iconic because it's elegant, flat, and very secure. This is also called a flat fell and English stitch. If you are annoyed because the pockets are always coming out from your jeans, just do this. Take a piece of ribbon or tape, sew it to the corner of the pocket, and sew it to the zipper fly. Make sure it's loose so it has more ease. You can sew this by hand too. Tips and tricks for your sewing supplies. Today, let's talk about threads. Tip number one, try to create a collection with the most variety that you can. Tip number two, because creating a good collection might be a little expensive, start with the basics, black, white, beige, and build up your colors each time you have a new project. Get the thread for the new project, and maybe some more. Tip number three, try to organize your threads in the best way you can so you can see all your colors at once. Tip number four, don't get too crazy. Know your space limitations and stop when you see that you have a good collection. I may not be your best example. I have an endless amount of tips, so please let me know if you're interested in more. Hey guys, today I'm showing you a little sewing hack on how to sew spaghetti straps easily. First up, I'm cutting my material in bias. So next up, I'm installing my slim foot, but if you need it really small, you can also use a zipper foot. Okay, so then I'm sewing my rat tail cord onto the edge and then proceed as normal with sewing your strap. So now I'm cutting off the excess material. And here comes the fun part. All you need to do is grab the rat tail cord and now you can slide all of that fabric all the way down and it's going to flip it really easily. You know how tedious it can be to do this without this little hack, so I hope this helps you guys. Here I'm repeating it just to show it a little bit clearer. Another hack is to start sewing about one centimeter away from the edge when you sew down and this will make it even easier for the cord to glide through and flip. So here I've completed three straps of three different sizes elegantly. And as you can see guys, these are flawless results and it was super easy to do. I'm going to clarify the flipping part when making super easy spaghetti straps. When sewing the strap, make sure to sew the end wider. This is really going to help narrow down the resistance that the strap will face when flipping it. 
Then all you need to do is pull. Although it really helps to use a seam ripper or something fine to help kickstart the inversion. Here I'm going to demonstrate it again. So I always make the end wider and then you just need to pull. It's obviously easier when it's short, but when it's long, you might struggle a little more, but you'll get there at the end of the day. So I really hope that this helped clarify some things. Sewing hack. If you want your lining to flow with your dress, I'm going to show you a quick way to do this. So here I have my dress fabric and my lining and a thread that matches perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and thread the needle using four strings of fabric. So I'm going to sew it onto the bottom of the dress and then I'm going to make a little loop. And then I'm going to sew through the loop and then loop it again and again and again and again. So you can keep going for as long as you need. When you have reached your desired length, just loop the needle through the final loop, pull it, and now you're going to sew this onto the outer fabric of the dress. So now we have formed what's called a chain stitch, and now you can just cut off the excess. This little detail is really nice in a dress. You can also do this for belt loops on the side of the dress, and if you don't want to make your own chain stitch, you can also buy some pre-made ones. I just like to do it myself so I can get the color just right. I know nobody wants to have to sew a button, but we gotta stay warm this winter, folks. Here I'm gonna show you how to sew a button. So first, I mark it where I need it. I just do a little cross, but sometimes you'll have leftover holes from where the button fell out. So then you're gonna thread your needle with four threads and loop it through one hole and cross stitch it and sew under. Then I like to stick a needle in just to suspend the button. Then I stick the needle through the empty hole and cross stitch it again and I do this over and over again until you feel that it's strong. Now I can remove my needle and I'm going to sew the thread through it and wrap it and wrap it and wrap it until you get dizzy. Just kidding. So when you feel that it's strong, we can now work on making the knot to secure it and then send it back underneath. Now I'm just going to cut off the excess thread and here you can see that I have a double button so if you want to learn how to do that, please let me know. But I hope that this helped and stay warm this winter. Yes, you do wrap it because it keeps it high and suspended but also stable. But if you want to know the very best technique, try doing this. It looks very elegant and it's the best method for sewing buttons. Can you spot the difference between these two clips? Here are five steps to a perfect euro hem. One, cut your pants to the desired length. Two, cut off the hem one quarter inch away from the sewing line. Three, open the hem using a razor blade or a seam ripper. Four, sew the hem to the pants one quarter inch away from the edge. Now you can see that it's coming together. Step five, we're going to flip it and do a top stitch. You can also use a rubber mallet to help flatten it down as well. I know I really simplified the steps to doing a Euro hem, so I have a full tutorial on my YouTube channel with all the details, but I am more than willing to do many videos here explaining them, so please ask away all the types of questions. A lot of people opt for the Euro hem because it keeps the original hem, so it keeps that character that the jeans once had, and it looks like nothing was even done. Hope you like this! Here are the tips you are waiting for to sew back your hem in a Euro hem. First up, you want to make sure that the size of your hem and the bottom of the leg are the same size. If it's too big, you can just take it in. Make sure all of your side lines align. You can use pins and make sure the needle lands where you need it and also sew right beside the old dots. This step is a cherry on top. Make sure that you're sewing over the old holes and also that you use a proper thread color and make sure that you're catching all the material underneath. You can use a rubber mallet to flatten it and even manually sew with your machine at the bulkiest parts. 
The Eurohem is an intermediate skill, so if you're going to attempt it, I recommend checking out our YouTube video that has way more details. But of course, we want to keep making tip videos, so ask away any questions. I thought you'd never ask. This comes with a boiler, and here it tells me the water level. And then I use distilled water to prevent rusting on the inside of the boiler. And this is my Mighty Iron. It releases a lot of steam, makes everything crispy and flat. I love it. We got many comments asking, how do you sew the elastic on these masks? So let me give you some insider tips. For starters, you want them to overlap around 3 quarter inches and I like the elastic that comes from the top to be over the one from the bottom. Here I'm giving you a visual of how the needle comes down. So that line that I marked in blue is where I want my needle to penetrate the fabric in. So it's not exactly at the edge, in fact it's a little bit past the edge. Then I just sewed forwards and backwards a couple of times and that's how it's done. So I'm going to show again here, you want them to overlap but don't sew at the edge, start a little bit ahead and just like that we're all done. I like to slide the elastic so that the exposed ends are tucked in and then I just do a little top stitch over so that it doesn't move. So I hope this gives you some advice on how to tackle those difficult elastics. This is a great question, and the answer is that I am annoying. Masks are designed for the everyday life. All the visible stitches around that help them keep their shape are a no-no in haute couture. But still, we can borrow this detail that gives the mask a higher quality look. And that is the edges are folded in. Do you see the difference when they're folded in and when they're not? You can also use an understitch to achieve this finish more comfortably. I hope this helps. 